to I have some really cool things to show you today, that's for sure. And to everyone that is watching that knows that angels are real, welcome to the fam. So we have this amazing story of this Jason Upton song that was being recorded. There is a 12 foot angel standing behind the man. I'll let them tell you themselves. So watch this. Been to this college auditorium and I basically just put the recorder on and let it go. And uh, we were doing style check and I looked up to the ceiling and I started seeing this fog coming through. I figured it was just like the, you know, the condenser, the air conditioner, the coil or something, fog starts coming in the room. I started feeling a whole lot of god all of a sudden I really put two and two together and we'll slow me up take some time. And so I, uh, I asked the janitor, I said, hey, what's that stuff coming out of the ceiling up there? And he looked up there and he said, I don't know, there's no pipes up there. And so this holy fear kind of came over me. And meanwhile, there's all these youth guys in there. They're real stoic. They got their arms crossed and everything's kind of like, let's see what you got, young man. <laughs> you know, one of those things. So we finished and uh, we just started playing. And it got to the point where it got so thick in there that I jumped off stage and I went and jumped under the soundboard. I mean, I felt so much God. I was like, oh my God, in any minute something's just going to bust through. And all of a sudden, this little kid comes under the soundboard. He goes, there's a 12 foot angel standing behind Jason Upton. And you know what? I know I wasn't singing because I wasn't up there. William wasn't singing. Jason's singing, but there's two or three part harmonies going on in the room. And I'm like, what in the world? And I'm looking on the hard drive recorder and it's recording it. And I'm thinking, this is on here. When I play this back, I'm going to come out of my skin. So all of a sudden, all this stuff happens. All these guys that were like, yeah, they're, hey, hey, oh my God, you know? And Jason, I look at Jason, and he's up on stage, and his eyes are rolled back in his head, and he's teetering on his piano bench. I'm like, oh my God, he's drunk. So I thought that was something that he did all the time. And he starts saying, ah, da, da. I thought he's completely lost it. So all this stuff's <laughs> going on, right? And it's happening in real time, so you're not even catching all of what's happening. And then after the meeting, I went up to, because we were running together, I went up to get Jason on the stage. He was completely plastered. But he'd never been drunk in the spirit before, so he said, ah, I'm feeling all tickly. He's drunk in the spirit. <laughs> yeah, I laid to make a long story short, he fell asleep in the dorm because I was like a drunk guy. We just laid down in the bed with all his clothes on his back and he was gone. So the next morning, I'm thinking, it was that real? I went back to Nashville and I'm in there with, with this engineer friend. I was producing the project and sitting on there, we're going through all the material. We get to the song Fly. And all of a sudden, I said, wait a minute, now that was really an angel. And all of a sudden, there's this perfect voice that comes by. I went, whoa! And I said, we got to find that. And the engineer goes, he goes, oh, that's just a slight of acoustic anomaly. That's probably a tom-tom ring or something. And the, so I thought, oh, yeah, well, let's find it then. So we start going through, we start stoling out each channel, not a tom-tom, not a keyboard. Blah, blah, blah. We get through everything except Jason's vocal. And I remember the kids said, there's a 12-foot angel behind Jason. So we stole out Jason's vocal track, and there's two waveforms on there. One little one, and one big, big one. And you can see it. And not only that, but you can hear it. And the guy goes, well, that sounds like something standing like 12 foot behind Jason. I said, I told you it was an angel. And so literally, literally on that, when, you, when, you, when that part hits, it doesn't matter. I mean, you get hammered every time. So here's where it got really crazy. So all of a sudden, we start getting emails from Heidi Baker's group up there. Unbeknownst to us, when Jason's going, ah, da, da, ah, it's Malawi for come to the table. So what? <laughs> He, we think he's just this drunken guy in a super, and he's actually so they play it when, when the orchestra. That's insane. Play, I just think that's so crazy. Let me play it one more time. That is so crazy. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was absolutely insane. So, okay, everybody that's just now joining, now we're going to go into our Bible study. So go grab your Bibles. And I just want to share this really cool thing with you guys because 
what's so amazing about God, and, and I believe God is really saying some things to us today. And I want to pray with you right now, wherever you are. Most people will listen to that, and you have the chance to believe. It's your choice. Faith is always a choice. In fact, you have a, a choice to believe whether or not even I'm real. You've seen me only on YouTube. How do you know that I'm not just some AI creation? How do you know that I'm not just some thing from a computer science system? right? You, why do you believe in me? Well, because you see me, right? With your physical eyes, but really you believe in me because you believe you're making, you make a choice. Let me turn down the volume just one second. You make a choice to believe in digital media. And so that you, because of you believing in digital media, you believe that I'm real. So many atheists, they say, how, show me God, show me like that actually God exists. And then I will believe him. And they don't understand that you are choosing not to believe him. You believe that nature exists. You believe that a painting exists from a painter, but yet you're not choosing to, to believe that our creation, it doesn't have a creator. See, they, they contradict themselves. And faith is always about a choice. I want to share some scriptures with you guys. In Revelations 19, verse, uh, starting in verse 8, it says, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt him and give him glory, because the wedding celebration of the Lamb has come. And his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, shining bright and clear, has given to her to wear. The fine linen represents the righteous deeds of his holy believers. When it comes to angels, I want to explain some ways that angels work to you today. I want to explain to you the way heaven works. Thank you, weird Al, for that gift. You're not weird. You're Al, you're called by God. I want to tell you what heaven says about you because I'm so tired of everyone living on this earth just going by what they feel or going by what they see. Listen, I understand. I understand that it feels tough sometimes, that it looks really bad at times, but I'm here to tell you that God's plan for you has not changed just because you made mistakes. God's plan for you has not changed just because you had a rough past. God's plan and words concerning you and the book that he's written about you has never changed. And he always stays the same. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And he wants to speak these words to you. You guys, do me a big favor. Smash the like button on this live stream. Go grab your, your family member or your friends so they hear this truth as well. And uh, the next scripture I want to share with you guys is found in Psalms 103. Before I share this verse in Psalms 103, I want to share with you a key to praise. If you want to learn how to live a victorious life, listen, when I was a freshman in high school, I was not the smartest person. I was not the best nerd. I was not like just the best thing ever. No. Also in football, I wasn't even that good. But when I was a freshman, I was all by myself in my room and the Holy Spirit walked inside my room. And I kid you not, I fell to the ground and God showed me how he had forgiven me. And God showed me speaking in front of more than 5,000 people in front of thousands of people in an auditorium, right? When God showed me that, I was like, whoa, but I chose to believe it. I knew it was going to come to pass. I knew it was going to happen. He also spoke to me and he said, Gabe, you will see miraculous signs and wonders in your high school. And by the way, guys, be sure to stick around till the end of this live stream to get this prayer. You don't want to miss the prayer at the end of this live stream. A lot of people, when they watch YouTube videos, they just watch like three minutes worth and then they scroll off. But you're still here because God has this message just for you. So don't leave just yet. And God showed me this vision of speaking in front of thousands of people. And I couldn't believe it if I had my eyes on myself. If I had my eyes on all the things I've done in the past, I couldn't believe it. You see, at that time when I was a freshman in high school, I was living both uh, double-sided for God. I said that I loved God, but then I would go out with friends and do some really horrible stuff. And I was just like a huge hypocrite, right? So it didn't make sense why God would choose to use me. It didn't make sense why God would choose to love me. It didn't make sense why I would even be doing anything successful after all the mistakes I made. But you want to know why God showed me that? Because it's not about how good you are. It's about how good the blood of Jesus Christ is. It's about what God says about you. Here's the thing, though. You cannot just ignore what God says and keep on going your own way and expect to find goodness because on your own accord, you will always fail. But the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times yet gets back up again. And the way you're able to get back up again is through the blood of Jesus. And so here I was as a freshman in high school on the ground and God showed me speaking in front of thousands of people. And I just simply chose to believe it. I knew that it was going to come to pass and I chose to do what he said. I'm here to tell you that God is going to give you visions. He's going to give you dreams. He's going to put things down on the inside of your mind. What are you dreaming about today? But I would, I would challenge you, take those dreams and ask God which are from him and which are just not from him, right? Because when I was a freshman, I had dreams of playing college football and going to the NFL and becoming this and becoming that and getting the cutest girl in high school, right? And I had all these dreams, but they were dreams out of my own accord, out of my own mind, right? But when I just chose to love God, truly and purely, then he reset my dreams. It's time for God to reset your dreams. You say, Gabe, but you don't know what's happening. You say, Gabe, you don't know what I'm thinking. Gabe, you don't know what I'm going through. Listen, it's time to shut down what earth says about you. What does heaven say about you today? The Bible says in Psalms 100, and we'll start out in verse one. How do you praise God? How do you lift up a thanks to God? This is how. Psalms 100 and verse one, lift up a great shout of joy to Yahweh. Go ahead and do it everywhere. Why did angels appear in this song? 
why did a 12 foot angel just stand behind this man and sing with him? It's because this man was praising Yahweh, our creator. You want to know how to get angels to help you in your situation? You want to know how to get God to break through that problem that you're facing right now? This is how. Check this out. Verse, uh, lift, verse one, lift up a great shout of joy to Yahweh. Go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere. Praise God. Um, verse two, worship Yahweh with gladness. Sing your way into his presence with joy. Realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping Yahweh, our God. For he is our creator. We belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. God is not ashamed to call you his own. God sees you right now watching this live stream. And he's so, he's so happy to call you his own, to call you his. Verse four, uh, you could pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Bring your thank offering to him. Affectionately bless his beautiful name. Here's what happens with God so many times. The devil has been lying to you so much, trying to get you to believe that you're not good enough, that God is angry at you, that God is sending you bad things to teach you, that God is allowing that horrible thing that happened in your family or with your friend or with your work situation or with your daughters or your sons or your mother or your father. And Satan is trying to tell you that those things that happened was just God teaching you. No, listen, that's a lie. God is only good. Trust me when I tell you, he is only good. You know, when Jesus was on this earth, he never looked at a sick person and said, oh, well, maybe God's teaching you how to be sick. Oh, well, God's angry at you. Oh, you sinner. No, Jesus looked at them and said, be healed, be cleansed, be restored. Did they deserve healing? Did they deserve goodness? Did they deserve anything from God? Absolutely not. Yet God still gave it to them. But here's the deal. You've got to choose to receive. If I had $100 in my hand right now and I handed it to you, you still wouldn't have $100 until you actually took it in your hand. And God's question to you tonight is, what will you take in your hand? He's been wanting to give you so many amazing things. He's just waiting on you to take. A lot of people say things like, oh, I'm just waiting on God. I'm waiting on God for a job. I'm waiting on God for the right education. I'm waiting on God to send me the wife. I'm waiting on God to send me the husband. Listen, do what God tells you right now, and you might just see exactly what you're believing for come to pass. He's waiting on you. The ball's in your court. If I sent a DM to my girlfriend, if I sent a message to my girlfriend, right? And I said, hey, babe, uh, let's talk tonight at uh, 10 p.m., okay? And I said, let's talk at 10 p.m. And this is the time that we can talk, right? And let's say she never checked messages. Let's say she just checked Instagram. Now, she never will. My girlfriend's amazing. She's absolutely the best ever. Uh, but anyways, um, let's say she just checked Instagram DMs, right? She would never see my message. She would never call me. Now, would she have never called me because it was my fault or because I didn't make the offer? No, she would have never called me because she didn't choose to open up the message. And that's how that is a really similar situation. That's actually never happened with me and my girlfriend. But that has happened a lot of times in our life with when it comes to our relationship with God. Because the reality is that God has completely reached out to us. He's completely extended his hand. Now it's our choice. Will we receive it? Will we choose to freely just open up to the gift of God? <laughs> Um, I want to share with you another scripture. I want to tell you a little bit of how angels work. In Psalms 103, you know, it's, it's funny to me when people want to like, an atheist recently made it. First of all, guys, I want to say congratulations to all of us. We hit a million subscribers on the channel, which is completely insane. Um, I'm just some random white guy. I didn't even have social media in high school. I'm only 21 years old. I have no logical conclusion to tell you why I have a million subscribers other than the wisdom of God was poured out on my life. I don't even, even as I'm speaking to you right now, a lot of people ask me, they're like, Gabe, hey, do you write like a teleprompter? Do you write a speech when you speak? Listen, I don't, I don't write anything. I'm just holding a Bible right now. And I just know the words that I'm going to tell you because God literally download, downloads them into my heart and then I speak them out loud. That's what's so insane. And we hit a million, not because I'm something special, but because God is something special. And a lot of people are like wondering, Gabe, how do you feel after hitting a million? Can I be honest with you? I, I don't really, it, it doesn't really matter. What matters is you. What All I care about is that you're watching this. If there was one view, if there, you know, I did a Bible study in high school and the first Bible study that I held in my high school, you know how many people came? One. Now, now if I did a Bible study with my YouTube, of uh, half the school might come. I don't know. I don't know how many would come. Well, not liberal high school, maybe no one would come. Anyway, so, um, but only one person came. And you know what? I was just as excited as I am now because I'm just as excited about one as I am about 99. And that's the heart of God the Father. Too many of you think that God is focused on other things. Did you know God can't stop thinking about you? 
Do you know as the sand is in the seashore, how many how many sand particles do you think are in, in the in the whole ocean? And the hurricane, uh, whatever his name is, that just hit Florida. Florida, how many sand particles do you think were thrown up in the air? You couldn't even count. That's how many gods. That's how much God's thoughts are for you, and so much more. Oh, if only you would understand. I don't have English words to describe the love that God has for you. There has been no one in your life that has shown you the exact love that God has shown you. Now, I, I do know that there are people of representations. I'm a representation of God's love to you. I'm doing this live stream right now, not because I want subscribers, not because I want viewers, not because I want money, not because I want accolades or success. I'm here talking to you because I just simply love you. You know, for like six months to a year, I spent thousands of dollars and I spent really everything I had just on this channel. And I wasn't really making any money. I was making barely any money. I was living broke and it was horrible. I was actually living in a trailer and you know why I kept doing it? And I didn't even like care that much that I wasn't making barely any money because I simply love you because I'm simply here for you. That's what I'll do for the rest of my life. Now, as the money comes in, as the subscribers come in, as the ministry grows, cool. But like my heart never changes and that's the heart of God for you. Man, um, so I was one of three. I want to share this verse with you. Verse 20 says, bless the Lord, all his messengers of power. For you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of his word to do it. I love that so much. I want to read that uh, verse to you one more time. So give me one second. Let me just pause that. So it says, who listen mightily to his word, who do it. Let me actually get, um, let me get a different background. Oh, here we go. There we go. Boom. Now we got a different background like that. So. When it comes to angels, angels accomplish the word of God. You've got to filter every situation, every feeling, every thought you have, every relationship. You must filter it through the word of God. Okay, recently I was on a road trip with some of my friends, right? And there was times that were coming up where they were really annoying me. They were, they were just getting at me. You know what I'm saying? The way he was driving, the way they were talking, like they were just really annoying me, right? I had a decision. I know this is a really simple thing that looks like it doesn't matter, but it's just an example. And I had a decision. I could choose to get super angry and I did get pretty angry actually. And I didn't respond the way I should have, but I, I, I could choose to get really angry and just yell at him and just, and just leave him and never be friends with him again and just call it quits. Or I could choose to forgive him quickly. I could choose to realize that maybe I'm not perfect. Maybe I've been a bad driver before. Maybe I've done things that I haven't uh, been supposed to be doing. Maybe I have gotten close to the yellow line before, right? I, I, there's, there's a way in which you process love instead of just reacting emotionally. Stop reacting emotionally to everything that happens. To that treat, to that teacher that treats you like junk. To the, to the friend that bullies you. To the, the person that says bad things about you. Take a step back. Forgive them quickly. See that wrong. See that fault that they've done. And I want you to see that on the cross and see how Jesus Christ has paid the price for that. So you don't have to pay the price for the wrong that was done to you. That's how you forgive. That's why you forgive. Not because they're good. Not because what they did was right. No, what they did to you was wrong. You still must forgive. Not because of them, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, as you choose to, to process your life through the word of God, you'll see yourself rightly. You won't waste your time watching things that just get you in a perverse mindset. Okay, for example, things like don't have sex before marriage. I don't tell you guys not to have sex before marriage, trying to make you think that you need to be good enough. I don't tell you don't watch porn. I don't tell you don't look at bad things just so you feel like you have to be good enough. No, I tell you don't do those things because God has not created you that way. Your literal physical biology is not created for you to be sleeping with 100 women. It's going to hurt you. Your literal biology is not created to be watching lustful things because there's no commitment there. Sex is like commitment. It's like a million dollars. Would you just wake up one day and give a million dollars? If you had a million dollars in your bank account, would you just wake up one day and just give it out to a random girl the first night you see her? That would make absolutely no sense. Why? Because that's commitment. That's value, right? Well, it, what's even more valuable than a million dollars is who you are, the full person of who you are. And when you have sex with someone, you're giving your full self to them. And now I will say, if you made mistakes before, if you've looked at bad things before, if you've lusted before, you're just like everyone else. We all have made mistakes before. Repent. The way to repent is to turn. You know, a lot of people think that repenting is like this thing of like, you must be good enough for God. No, you don't repent trying to be good enough for God. You repent because Jesus Christ is already good enough for God and he has paid the price. You repent because he has already chosen you and loved you and given you everything that he has. And he'll always be your, by your side. He'll always take your side in every single circumstance. Because you're loved, you will repent. You know, um, with, with my girlfriend, I don't, 
I don't look at her and I don't live my life. I don't uh, stay faithful to her because I feel like I have to stay faithful to her because I feel like I have to talk to her and not other girls. No, I, I am faithful to her and I only talk to her because, because I love her and also because she loves me, right? And it, because I so love her, because she so loves me, I, I don't have a desire to talk to any other woman. I never will, right? It's like, do you guys get what I'm saying? If I ever had to say like, oh, I have to go talk to my girlfriend. I have to go talk. I have to go talk to, I have to go talk to the, to her today. If I have to go do this for her today. No, that's a, but no, I'll never say that. Why? No, I get to talk to her. I get to help her and bless her and spend my time with her, right? You don't have to repent to God. You don't have to spend time with God. You don't have to pray. You don't have to go to church. No. Why are you talking like that? You get to go to church. You get to pray. You get to worship him. You get to exist. You get to breathe. So there's too many, there's too much of this entitlement attitude of, of 2022, where everyone thinks they're entitled to every single thing they have. And then they have to put up with God. They have to put up with values. They have to put up. No, God is only good. If you want goodness in your life, you follow him and seek him and he'll bless you. He'll always watch over you. By the way, fast forward from that freshman in high school, uh, Gabe, uh, my senior year, my principal calls me. She says, Gabe, you're valedictorian. You're giving a speech. Sure enough, get this though. It was a public high school, which means you don't normally don't talk about God. She was retiring that year. And she told me, Gabe, you can say whatever you want. And I got up there in front of 5,000 people and uh, I talked about Jesus. It was really awesome, right? And, and the vision God gave to me came to pass. And he showed me the classes to take. He would help me with tests. He gave me wisdom, but I took the steps if you will just listen to God's voice, let him take care of his business. Listen, the way to get done what you need to get done in your life right now is this key right here. Stop worrying and caring so much. Let God help you. You know, when a man is flying on uh, uh, a parachute, does he try to inspect every single hole and hold up the parachute himself and, and, and then canvas the parachute? No, once the parachute's in the air, it's in the air. And all you got to do is let it carry you. All you got to do is put your hands on the rope and let it grind you and let it bring you. You've got to throw those worries, throw those cares, those anxieties on God because he so cares for you and let him carry you. Just ask him for help today. Whatever it is that you're going through, just ask him. In fact, pray these words with me wherever you are. Say this after me. God, I ask you for wisdom. I ask you for help. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Listen to me now when I say this. You are not destined to fail. It's time to be strong. Stop wasting your time. It's time to see yourself the way God sees you. You are more than a conqueror. You are a victorious one in Christ Jesus. You are a strong man. You are a strong woman. You're going to do everything God called you to do. Don't worry about your past. Just leave that. Let that go. It's gone. It's, it's underneath the grave. Jesus Christ already took care of it. Move forward to your future. Go get those grades done. Go get that job done. Go get the bills paid. Provide for your family. Provide for your mother and your father and your sisters and your brothers. And get the stuff done and fulfill what God has for you. And love your neighbor. Love your, love your mother. Love your father. Take out the trash. Take out the, clean up your sibling's room. Do something good for someone today. Give to someone today. You know, when we give to others, God will bless us. When someone needs food or a car or just a friend or just somebody to call, how about you be that person for them? And you know, when we seek God's kingdom first, he, he says that you don't even have to worry about the other things. I want to tell you guys, thank you for being a part of this channel. I'm so excited we hit a million subscribers. We're going to hit 10 million subscribers one day. We're just going to keep growing, y'all. I say we just be the biggest. I say we just be the biggest YouTube inspirational channel ever. How about that? I'm going to just say that right now. I don't know. Why not? That's who our God is. Let's get it. Listen, I'm only able to do this. This, this live stream was sponsored by you. You are able to give me the ability to share the gospel freely. And I don't have to listen to a cancel culture telling me what I can and can't say. If you want to help support this channel, you know, when you guys give into this channel, your seeds are going into millions of people's lives. There's recently somebody that testified about how their dad was a drunken, a drunken alcoholic, started watching these live streams. He got touched by God. Now he's set free. He's, he's not a drinking anymore. And he's just, he's touched by God. His life changed. And uh, I just want to say thank you to you guys so much. You helped me do that. You helped set a drunken free by supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel, um, I, I really want to upgrade more, guys. I want to hire like an editor. I want to get a team together. I really want to keep upgrading the channel so we can keep growing. If you want to help support me, visit gaypro.locals.com. I'm doing a Zoom there right now. So click the link down in the description below or just go to gaypro.locals.com. 
and uh, I do Zooms. I have exclusive content. I make videos, and I actually do Bible studies with everybody on that community. Um, in fact, I, fr- uh, I do a Bible study on the Bible app. So if you want a Bible study with me and comment and talk to me directly and, uh, and all those good things, just click gaypro.locals.com. It's the link down in the description below. If you're on the Rumble watching this, just click the red Join button. And uh, yeah, be sure to sign up there on gaypro.locals.com. I'm going to go do a Zoom and meet every single person right now. So I'm gonna, I want to meet you and I want to talk to you. So go click that link down in the description below and I'll answer your questions. I'll be your friend, whatever you need. Just